everyone, my name is Sarah and today I'd like to discuss with you guys what I read for the month of October. So I know I've been a little bit MIA lately here on YouTube, but school happened, midterms, papers, all the whole nine yards, you know how university goes. But regardless, I'm here now and I love to discuss with you guys all that I read this month. So let's just dive right in. The first book I finished in the month of October is actually a reread for me. I am reading the entire Mortal Instrument series over Audible, and this month I finished City of Lost Souls, which is book five in the Mortal Instrument series by Cassandra Clare. Because it is so far in the series, I will not tell you what this book's about specifically, in case you want to read it. I highly recommend it. Um, I gave this book five out of five stars, even though it is a reread for me. I absolutely loved it so much. It was like coming home and it's been quite a while since I read it so therefore I forgot a lot about what happens in this book. This book is also part of the book I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to for whatever reason. Like I didn't retain a lot of what had happened. So um, it was nice to actually reread this and remember everything that happened. Anyways, I will tell you a brief summary of City of Bones. I won't spend too much longer on this because I hope you guys have read it. If you haven't, I highly recommend the whole entire series. Anyways, anyways, um, City of Bones is the first book in the series and it is about this teenage girl named Clary Frey who, whose mother goes missing and she has to go find her and along the way she figures out all the stories are true about vampires, werewolves, warlocks, fairies, angels and demons, and during this crazy adventure, she runs into a shadow hunter named Jay Swalen, who is totally swoon-worthy. As you can tell, I'm not biased at all. Wink, wink. Um, anyways, it's her adventure trying to find her mom, figure out who she is, who her family is, and figure out all the secrets that her mom kept from her about the secret life. So, highly recommend it. Five out of five for my reread. And um, now let's get into some of the books I haven't yet read except for this month. Right. So my next book is a book I, bri I briefly mentioned in my previous video for my September wrap up and it is Jane Austen's North Anger Abbey. I read this for my 19th century British literature class so I was forced to read it um, but it wasn't too bad. I'm giving it a 3 out of 5 star rating. I definitely see its merit for sure. Um, I see the value in it and I see why people like it, but it's just not my type of book, to be honest. If there is another Jane Austen book you think I might like better, given my young adult fantasy tastes, go ahead and leave that down below and I will definitely give it a shot one of these days. But Northanger Abbey just wasn't for me, and honestly the biggest part was that the narrator kind of got on my nerves. And I hate how reality kind of kicked in for Catherine later on and she, her mind went everywhere when she got to Northanger Abbey. I wasn't set on finding suitors or being ladylike or learning the rules of society. And her imagination went wild and she wasn't necessarily condoned for, she was condoned for that behavior. For her imagination running wild. And I don't like that personally, so I mean, that's just me. I think imagination is great and fantastic, given that wasn't quite the rule of this time. She's making a parody of the gothic by writing this novel, and I like gothic novels a lot, so I, I appreciated the attempt and the humor, but wasn't for me. But 3 out of 5 stars, still a solid read in my opinion, just not my taste. Now I'm going to move on to a book I ridiculously enjoyed and that I read during my very limited free time. So in this book, as I said, I... I was reading it for fun, and I briefly mentioned it in my last couple of videos, and that is none other than Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. This book was absolutely amazing. Five out of five stars, hands down, worth the hype. I loved it so much. If you love a, a very character-driven heist story, this is definitely a good book for you. Um, no, this is not a recommendation video. But I highly, highly recommend this book. If you're not even big into young adult, I still recommend it. Um, but in case you don't know what this whole series is about, it is about 
um, this this group of outcasts called the Dregs that are le led by the amazing and mysterious Kaz Brecker. And basically, he is signed on to a job where he needs to go into the most guarded, hev the he most heavily guarded prison. Don't know why that's so hard to say. Most heavily guarded prison in in the land, and basically he has to steal a criminal back from that prison and deliver him to this guy. And with that, it is supposed to be like an impossible task, just unrealistic, not doable, and absolutely crazy plan. And he has to pick the perfect team, and it's about this team that goes in and attempts the impossible. And I have to say, it left me turning like about halfway through, it was hard for me to put the book down. The first, uh, that's why I would say it was a bit slower at first, but I love learning characters' backstories, how they think, their mechanisms. I love character development, and you kind of see that even the first half of the book. And then after that, it just kind of just it starts chugging along and really picking up the pace. And as I said, I just loved it. This is a masterpiece. I definitely see myself reading Kirkwood Kingdom, which is actually my current read right now. So. As I said, this kind of helped me get over my indecisiveness of what to read. Don't worry, I'll still continue random reads after this series. <laughs> or duology. It's not quite a series. This duology. Anyways, so there's that, and I absolutely loved it. Like, I mean, it's sad I'm done. But it's done, and I know the story now, and totally worth the hype. So. Alright, so this next group of stories that I have read come from my classic fairy tales textbook from the fairy tale class I am taking and in this we read a total of six different types of fairy tales some of them grouped together others not um, anyways from here we read Little Red Riding Hoods a lot of different versions of those and before Charles Perrault and the um, Brothers Grimm there was this other version that is very overly sexualized and kind of cannibalistic and wow that was weird to read and even watch so with that um little red riding hood that you know this is not the original one that's for sure and it was interesting to read and interesting to analyze i'll leave that at that then we also read hansel and gretel the Jun the juniper tree and um, John, uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. All in one little trickster section of this book. And basically that was a lot of cannibalism to read in one section. So I was definitely over it <laughs> by the end of it. So I knew Hansel and Gretel, I knew Jack and the Beanstalk. I did not know the Juniper Tree by the Grimm, um, Brothers Grimm. And with that I would I would say it's an interesting fairy tale to definitely read. It's it's kind of brutal. Actually, it's very brutal. Normally, my professor saves it to the end to kind of split up the cannibalistic nature of some of these tales. But this editor, she uh, definitely put them all in one little section, and we had to read that for that week, and that was just a lot to handle. But that's okay. It's done. And then I also read Iron Hans and stories alike that are about wild men, like men who are animals. And there are a lot of stories on that, and they're all very, very similar. But regardless, it's basically their hedgehog or some sort of beast, and they need someone to love them. It's almost like Beauty and the Beast, but not quite. There's definitely a different art to it. And those are um, fairly fascinating to read about also. And then I did read, in the month of October also, Beauty and the Beast, one of the more original versions of it by um, um, D. Baramount, 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 D. Baramount, Baramount, I can't pronounce it. It's a French author who wrote it like in the 1700s and very, very different than Disney, I will have to say. Um, like there's no guests on, there's no rose involved, well there's no magical rose involved, and there's like an evil fairy and good fairy, and she has sisters and brothers, and it's no mother's mentioned, and it's very interesting. But regardless, it was, I'm writing a paper on it, I'm actually comparing this 
um, version to As Old As Time. And it was pretty good. I'm not done with the paper, but I am still currently working on that. And I still love Beauty and the Beast, even with the tale that's written by a woman in the 1700s. I still loved it, I'm not gonna lie, it was still a great tale. And anyways, so those are all the fairy tales I read. Quite a heavy month for fairy tales and a lot of heavy material in fairy tales this month. A lot of cannibalism and animals and yeah. So that's all I have to say about this month of fairy tales. I still have about another month and a half ago to go of this class, so tune in and more for what uh one more fairy tales I read for this class. So yay! So that is all I have to um babble on about for this month. So I read two five star books, one three star book, and I'm not going to write the fairy tales, but my favorite fairy tale was Beating the Beast, or the original Little Red Riding Hood, purely for shock factor of telling people about it. But it was overall very good reading month, so with that, if there is another Jane Austen book that you'd like me to read, or that you think I at least enjoy better than Northanger Abbey, it, it's on this side. Northanger Abbey. Please let me know down below and let me know what books you read in the month of October. Anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and keep reading whatever books you love and um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more of these videos and I will see you guys next time. Bye!